Welcome to Wilshire's Maundy Thursday celebration, a remembrance of the Last Supper and the night that Jesus was betrayed, all the way up to the cross on Good Friday. This is a long-standing tradition at Wilshire that we gather in the church's sanctuary and share this time with Jesus and with one another, even as he did with his disciples long ago. Of course, you are in your homes now and I am in mine, but through the miracle of the Spirit, uh, we are connected through technology and our hearts are joined together in this time. We'll be celebrating this service in this way and then tomorrow there'll be an opportunity for you to meditate upon the seven last words of Jesus on Good Friday and spend some time in solitude reflecting upon his death during Holy Saturday. That will prepare us for our time together Easter Sunday morning when we'll share together uh, in each of our places, wherever we may be, the celebration of Jesus' resurrection and the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Right now, I want to invite you to pause this and to go and get the elements for communion that we'll share during this service. Uh, prepare them and have them ready for later in the service. Now, thanks for being with us and we look forward to sharing in this time together. Let us pray. Our good and gracious God, we thank you for inviting us into the experience of your passion through Jesus Christ. Help us to ask the question about whether we are prepared to be faithful to him in death as well as in life. Now open us spiritually. Help us to meditate upon your love for us, the suffering of Christ, and the hope that we have that always comes through pain and suffering until finally we experience the joy of new life. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen.
Preparing for Passover, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 12 through 21. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes at, as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Washing the Disciples' Feet, John chapter 13, verses 2 through 17. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set an example for you, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. John's Gospel tells us that Jesus did a strange, strange thing. Though he was in the very stuff of him, God, Jesus took on the form of a servant, considering equality with God not something to be taken by force, but something achieved only by giving himself completely. Jesus did a strange, strange thing by washing feet. <laughs> and our days are filled with strange, strange things in service of one another. We wear masks over our smiles to keep one another safe. We stay inside, we stay home, even when we feel cooped up and lonely. And we wash our hands like every 15 minutes. <laughs> As on that night so long ago, water helps us serve one another. And we're somehow blessed in the doing. Jesus says. If you have a basin prepared, simply place your hands in the water. Remember Peter's question to Jesus, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? He was nervous. He didn't quite know how to receive Jesus's gift. As we touch this water and as we continue washing our hands during this crisis, Know that your questions and feelings are all welcome. Your service, though it may feel routine, silly, or incomplete, is essential in these days. And it is essential in the mysterious work of the kingdom of God. Let us pray together. O oh Christ, as we touch this water, let it be for us a reminder of your service, your gift, your leadership. May it be for us a nourishing bath that soothes our souls. May it be for us a renewal that empowers us to follow in your way. In your most high and holy name we pray, O oh Jesus. Amen.
We come now to the table of the Lord. When Jesus gathered on that night with his disciples to share the supper with them, he gathered at a table not very unlike this. He had his closest friends with him. Obviously, they were not worried about the distance they were from each other physically. But before the night was out, Jesus would make a point of asking them about the distance they were from him spiritually. On that very night, one would betray him and another would deny him. He would be arrested and he would be taken away to be crucified. We come to this table tonight asking ourselves, how close are we to Jesus? Are we willing to love him and love each other even as he asked us? And so on the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take eat in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. And I will not drink of the fruit of the vine again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Our good and gracious God, we thank you that the Last Supper became the Lord's Supper for us. That what was last for them together in Jesus' earthly life has become for us an ongoing memorial to his suffering love that we are able to enact over and over again as we remember him and each other. We ask you to turn this bread and this cup into spiritual food that will nourish us unto eternal life. Grant your spirit's grace to us now as we partake. Renew our spirits, restore our hope, and give us again the joy of our salvation. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ broken for you. We lift this cup to you, O Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. the blood of Christ spilled for you and for your salvation. Amen. Oh,
Praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 14, verses 32 to 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The Arrest of Jesus, Mark, chapter 14, verses 43 through 50. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, 
The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. 